Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to Ionic Tips Weekly. Uh, in this video, I just wanted to quickly go over using the iOS simulators uh, and just talking through uh, a few of the keyboard shortcuts you can use uh, to interact with the simulator, uh, just like you would with a normal physical device. And so in the end, it's always sort of better to use a physical device for testing if you can, because uh, it's a more accurate representation of you know, what will really happen with users and some things you can't simulate in the simulator, uh, but there's a lot of uh, obviously different devices and software versions that uh, users might be using. So you can't realistically test on all of those physically. Uh, so the emulators and simulators are a really good way to test your applications. And so I have uh, Xcode up on the screen right now, and I'm specifically using a capacitor project for this. Uh, you could be using a Cordova project. Uh, you can open your Cordova projects up in Xcode uh, as well. Uh, you could either run the Cordova command to uh, launch the uh, simulator, uh, or you could do it through Xcode as well. And what you typically would do is you have your application open here and you can choose a device to run it on uh, through Xcode. So you might have an actual real device uh, connected to your computer. And in that case, you would see that there, you could select that. Or you can also select any of these different uh, iPhone or iPads in the list here. And then you just be able to click play and it's going to build your application and run it on the simulator as well as running your application on a simulator and launching it through this uh, play button here. You can also just go into um, the uh, Xcode menu up here. And if you just go to open developer tool and select simulator, uh, that's going to launch the simulator. And this is just going to be launched just like a normal iPhone, really. It's not launching an application, it is just, uh, it is the phone software after all. So it is just going to look like uh, normal iOS and you can have your applications installed on there and you can interact with them just like you would if you were uh, Testing on a physical device. So it might take a little bit to uh, boot up So I'll just wait for that to happen and then we'll have a bit of a play around. Okay, so the simulator is finished booting up now uh, You can see we have uh, an iPhone running here. It's an iPhone XR uh, running uh, 12 uh, iOS 12.1 And you can see this is just you know looks like a normal iOS device and we can interact with it uh, I can simulate touch gestures by just uh, dragging the mouse along the screen and I could open up any of these uh, applications as well. So I could open up the messages app and you can see we can click around in here. They got some uh, example messages that we can go into as uh, so typically we would of course launch our own application here and we'd be testing it. And if you do launch your application through this interface here, it'll open straight to your uh, application itself, not the, the home uh, screen of the uh, iOS software. And so it might not be immediately obvious how to uh, interact with this outside of just clicking. Uh, for example, if you're on a real device, you could click the home button, uh, you could do uh, gestures, you could lock the device. Uh, we can't really do that on here. Actually, now that I think about it, can you actually click these buttons? Which one's the lock screen for that? I guess it looks like you can actually interact with the lock button just by clicking it. Uh, which I didn't actually know until uh, right now. Um, but uh, you can also use keyboard shortcuts for that. I believe it would be Command L. Uh, but you can check in this menu up in the top left if you click on uh, hardware, you can see all the different commands we can use uh, to interact with the simulator here. And so yeah, so you can see there is a lock uh, option here, which is Command L is the shortcut. You could either click, uh, click on it uh, just directly or just hit Command L and that's going to lock the device. And then we could just uh, hit Command L again, I think, can you just hit any button? I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, you have to hit com uh, Command L to bring that up again, and then we can just swipe up to get into the software here. Uh, you might want to go back to the home screen, so you could use uh, the uh, simulated home button click, which is uh, Shift Command H. So if I hit Shift Command H, that's going to take me back to uh, the home screen. Uh, you might also want to close that application completely when you're testing. Maybe you want to close the application completely and reopen it. Uh, so in that case, you could just do the usual swipe from the bottom gesture. And that's going to bring up all of your active apps. And then you can just swipe it away like you would on a, a normal device. And so there's some more options in here as well. We can rotate the device, uh, rotate left, rotate right. Uh, which is just command and then either, either uh, left or right. 
So I can just flip the phone around like this. And so you could use that to test various orientations in your application. You can even access uh, Siri. We have keyboard and touch pressure stuff here as well. Um, and so all these options just allow us to interact with the device mostly in a way that we would with a physical device where obviously we can't actually uh, touch this phone, we can't move it around. So it is uh, still somewhat limited in terms of what you could actually do with a real physical device, but we can get a lot of the functionality and test it out uh, to see what it would be like uh, on a real physical device, keeping in mind that although this is uh, a pretty accurate representation of what it would be like. Uh, the simulators aren't a 100% accurate substitute for uh, a physical device. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed uh, this week's tip. Uh, if you did, as always, please do feel free to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.